各位觀眾，大家好，歡迎收睇廿六分鐘見證十六精華回顧。咁講到提高大眾認識、學習同埋欣賞原住民歷史以及文化，旅遊可以講係一個渠道。咁提供俾大眾同原住民聯繫嘅契機，透過飲食、生態旅遊等嘅方式，旅客同埋省民就可以同原住民對話，以第一身近距離咁了解原住民嘅故事。唔係呢一集嘅節目裏面，我哋就會帶大家去了解三位原住民旅遊業者嘅背景以及初心。So my name is Ines Cook. I'm part of the Newhawk Nation in Bella Coola, British Columbia. Ines Cook 係喺 Newhawk 部落出世嘅原住民。佢喺出世一年之後，因為當年政府嘅原住民兒童領養政策，被送到一個白人寄養家庭生活。I am part of the Sixties group. I was adopted out when I was young, and I didn't grow up with my culture. And my whole life, I knew that I was Indigenous, but I didn't. Know what that meant, and I didn't know if I wanted to be indigenous. I thought it was kind of a choice since I was adopted into a non-indigenous family. Um, but my whole life, I was yearning and searching for culture. My adoptive family, um, they didn't know what the government was doing. They just knew that, in their eyes, that this little girl needed a family with love, and they adopted me. And I was lucky, one of the luckier ones, because I had a great family and I was raised with love. So that's amazing.、Um, unfortunately, a lot of the stories aren't as positive. However, I was taken away from my family, taken away from my community, taken away from my culture, and my biological mother was basically deemed worthless, worthless all the other little girls. She wasn't allowed to speak her language. 呢一段歷史之所以被稱為 Sixty Scoop 六零年代挖空，係因為當時政府喺未經小朋友父母同保留區同意嘅情況之下，直接將小朋友帶走並送俾白人家庭領養，就好似劃走父母身邊嘅小朋友咁。成長過程中 ，Anas 對於自己原住民嘅背景感到好奇又困惑。有一次，佢去到近東亞旅遊，期間發現一間原住民餐廳，令佢好有興趣。When I was going through my divorce, I went to Kelowna during the wine festival, and I saw a big sign, and it said, "Don't panic, we have Bannock." And I told my friend, I said, "Oh my God, stop the car! There's a native restaurant here." And she's like, "What do you mean? What does that mean?" And I'm like, "There's a native restaurant in Kelowna." I said, "Oh my God, can you believe it? The Olympics are coming." 2010, the whole world is coming to Vancouver, and there isn't a place that they can have local Indigenous cuisine. That's insane. 当时佢意识到东澳将会带嚟大量游客，而餐厅系一个方法，比其他人亦都系令自己更加了解原住民文化。We need an Indigenous restaurant in Vancouver. There had been some years ago, but there hadn't been at the time. There was nothing. So my friend was like, "Oh my God, I'll work day and night. Let's just make it happen." And、uh, so I wanted it to be authentic. And、uh, what happened was, is、um, a lady we knew, her daughter, had a restaurant that she was subletting, and it kind of worked out all in the right time. So we just kind of moved in, and like literally, like a month later, we were open. Food brings everyone together, and food is a really great approach to to having a little flavor. Of somebody's culture. Hi, Nas 嘅原住民餐廳目前已經營運近十一年，餐廳嘅全部員工都係原住民。咁多年過去，呢一度仍然係温哥華唯一一間原住民餐廳。I wanted Bannock in the word, so Indigenous people knew it was their restaurant. That's our traditional bread. And then salmon. We're West Coast. We're salmon people. And I thought, okay, if somebody doesn't know the name of the restaurant, they'll be. It was salmon and something. So if you look up salmon and something, we'll come up. And otherwise, you're like, it was something in Bannock, then we'll come up. So <laughs> that was the reason I came up with that. So it'd be pretty obvious when you enter the walls. You'll see like the room. You'll see the walls are adorned with beautiful art. You know, it's all indigenous values of the modern viewpoint. You see our team. We're all indigenous. You see the food; it's all indigenous with a modern palate. You see all of it, and it's it's approachable. It's in the city. It's 
it's a nice little introduction and it can bring inspiration to try um, other indigenous uh, things. This is Devin and he's making um, bannock and it's just simple ingredients. It's flour, vacant powder, salt and water and then oil on the bottom of it. That's the uh, beginning product. We baked it for 20 minutes and this is the end product. Well,今年十九岁的Ida and we just, you can smell it, it smells really good. So we, we just brine it and smoke it for about 20 minutes. When I was younger, I ate nothing but fish, deer meat, moose meat, rabbit, ducks, goose. I never ate chicken or beef. It was always deer meat and all the, the wild game. Watch, that's how I learned. Now I got told how to do it, you gotta watch. If you don't learn from watching, you don't belong in the kitchen. That's what they told me when I was little, so I was eager to learn. Braising is a good braising. I learned, if you learn how to braise some game meat, it takes the game meatness out of it. You gotta learn the spices and garlic and onion. It's simple, just mirepoix, and then learn to put white uh, red wine with it. Or if you don't have red wine, use beer. Yeah, a bottle of beer would be great. This was gifted to me from the chief of my nation. When I received my name. Through my restaurant, I was able to reconnect to my biological family and start learning about my culture and my heritage. And I went back to my community, 111111, for a three day potlatch where I got reintroduced to my community and I received my traditional name, which is Sneets Mana. You cannot even imagine how I felt when I got a letter from the government saying that my biological mother passed away from a blood disorder. 雖然餐廳令Inas有機會同出世的原住民社區聯繫,但在成長過程中,一直都沒機會同社區接觸,每一次的探訪都令他覺得好有壓力. And when I went to the potlatch, I met 500 relatives. And that was super overwhelming. All of them were meeting me, and they remember my name, but I don't remember who they are or how I'm related to them, and I can't really figure it out. And, it, and then I feel like even worse. I feel like, how come I don't know my family? Children are, they're sponges, they absorb things, they understand things. I mean, even now, the younger generation is so much more about celebrating diversity with people, with gender, with culture, with everything. And it really is starting with the young and teaching, teaching the other people, you know. And I think reconciliation is probably one of my favorite terms. And everybody's responsible for themselves and it's a personal journey. Um, it's not so much for the indigenous people to, to reconcile, it's for the non-indigenous people to reconcile with the indigenous people and to find ways and to be a good ally be an amazing ally and and support BIPOC businesses, you know, and support other people and learn about it and learn about the history and celebrate the land that you live on and be respectful. 原住民文化和知識很多時候都是口耳相傳給下一代,因此要深入認識他們,最好的方法就是深入原住民社區或者是直接對話了。除了飲食,大眾還可以怎樣跟原住民有更多的接觸呢? Hello 
my name is Tira Fraser, and I am proud to be a Métis Esquio or a Métis woman. 旅遊業其中重要一環莫過於係負責乘載遊客到旅途目的地嘅航空業。Tira Fraser 二十年前一次坐小型飛機嘅經驗，令佢有興趣成為飛機師。So I was 30 years old uh, when I was in a small airplane for the very first time, and uh, I was on an aerial tour over the Okavanga Delta in Botswana, and the pilot was banking the aircraft and telling us stories of the land, sharing with us. About the trees and about the waters and about the animals. 作为女性原住民机师，佢话可以加入行业，希望增加非白人女性嘅代表性。Sometimes it's challenging to feel like,、um, you know, whether you're in a boardroom or in an organization, that that you look at things differently, you see things differently, and、um, and and you place importance on on different things, and、um, you know. Feeling that、uh, sense of the belonging that's hard when you feels different than than other people, and where、um, in the in indigenous spaces and with indigenous peoples,、uh, uh, it I have such a feeling of of belonging. 成為機師之後，佢成立自己嘅航空公司，並喺二零一九年十月正式營運。Esquio is a Cree word for woman. And I chose the name mindfully as an act of reclamation, reclamation of womanhood, reclamation of matriarchal leadership, and reclamation of language. And、uh, in a very male-dominated field, it's a pretty bold name to call your airline woman air. But、uh, people have been、uh, embracing it, and again, it's an act of, of reclamation, reclaiming. So the logo you can see in the middle. Is a、um, Métis symbol, and it's also the woman. You can see the head of the woman, and then you can see the arm uh, of uh, the woman. And then、uh, on the bottom, the green is to represent the land, and the blue is to represent the sky. It's a beautiful day. One of the things that we're really proud of is、uh, acknowledging. The land that we're traveling、uh, through and to, and also sharing with our our guests, our clients,、um, uh, ways to acknowledge uh, the indigenous uh, territories that we are traveling from, through, and to. The initial vision of the whole airline was to uplift indigenous tourism, to connect people here from YVR Musqueam territory. With the communities、uh, within our province, and you know the difference that we can make is、um, how people see the land. That witnessing of the land from the air, like a bird, when people are connected with the land, they want to take care of it. When they're connected with indigenous peoples and learning and growing from that language and that culture, flying is freedom. Flying is a door to new adventures and possibilities. 透過成立航空公司 ，Tira 除咗希望令客人同土地有更深嘅聯繫，同支援原住民社區，亦都希望更多原住民兒童同青少年有機會接觸飛行。An initiative called、uh, Give Them Wings, and we support this program that inspires、uh, Indigenous youth to take flight, and、uh, That inspiration of of the wonder of flight is so important, and so uh, mentoring uh, our young folks is a, a, a been a part of you know my two decade long career. 不过公司成立无耐之后就遇上新冠疫情爆发，佢期待未来可以接待更多本地同外国游客。With a, a small aircraft, we've been offering charters. Here from、uh, the Musqueam Territory throughout British Columbia, and we'll continue to offer、uh, those charters. So where it is that folks、uh, wish to to travel to, and we're in、uh, community engagement conversations with some communities on Vancouver Island, and looking to see how we might、uh, serve their community through scheduled service. The light at the end of the tunnel is here. We are so excited to bring、uh, people locally, traveling locally, and uh, help 
uh, people to connect with each other and connect with the land, witness the land by um, you know, sharing with them the, the, the wonder of flight and taking them to some awesome places here in British Columbia. So many people are looking for that authentic experience to get out on the land, meet people and connect with culture. So we've been very fortunate that it's one of the fastest growing sectors in the overall tourism industry. It's arts and culture. You can go to a great arts and culture experience up in Squamish and learn how to, how to develop a cedar bark bracelet. You can do outdoor adventure, wildlife viewing. There's great accommodations. You can do a road trip out into the southeast BC and go out into the Kootenai Rockies area. So there, it's all different sectors. You can do a wildlife viewing and your guide will talk about um, how, how the, we're so connected to the land and to the bears and the stories. BC 旅遊局喺二零一六年曾經估計，原住民旅遊業為省內創造七千四百份全職工作，帶嚟七億五百萬嘅經濟收益。BC 省原住民旅遊協會表示，省內原住民旅遊業過去不斷發展，協會亦都有為會員提供協助打造旅遊營商計劃嘅項目。咁不過，疫情就為業界帶嚟打擊。We have over 100 market-ready businesses. And over the last 10 years, we're, we're growing at least 10% each year. So we've actually seen a fair amount of growth in the last 10 years. Previous to the pandemic, our biggest market was some of the international visitors. So US is a big market, the United Kingdom is a huge market, same as Germany. And the Asian markets are also emerging markets where we're really working to build that awareness and the interest in having an indigenous experience. But yeah, right now we're really focused on the domestic market. 而為咗幫助原住民旅遊業發展同喺逆境中生存，聯邦政府同卑斯省府先後向業界撥款。The grants are used to really support the businesses to make sure that they're not going to close and they're going to become insolvent. So we just want to make sure that they'll keep their doors open in the next while. And it's a great way for us to um, build economy in our communities with jobs and um, the experiences also are provide a great capacity building. 雖然疫情為旅遊業帶嚟困難，但係亦都刺激業界以新形式同他人接觸。就好似卑斯省原住民旅遊協會，因為疫情限制未能夠舉辦大型活動慶祝原住民歷史月，因此舉辦咗三個網上工作坊，向參加者介紹原住民飲食文化同其他旅遊活動。Our information is passed through relationship. Then we are a peaceful people and we welcome you. So when you walk through the cedar sculpture. Cedar is sacred. It, it, it give it, our people are giving you a blessing. 呢一度係為人熟悉嘅温哥華士丹尼公園。喺行入圖騰柱之前，會經過呢一個雕塑。人類學家 Candice 解釋話：，如果細心留意，上面嘅圖案隱藏特別意思。They're holding paddles, and the paddles are saying we are the people of the Salish Sea. We we are water people. We travel by water. We live off the water with all of the seafood. And this here is the the crescent moon, and it's an understanding that we are harvest people. That our people harvested in spring, summer, fall, winter. We came together and we potlatch. So it's understanding and having that connection to the land. That understanding when food is ready. How to harvest it、um, in a sustainable way? 行入公園可以見到各式各樣嘅圖騰柱。Candice 話：佢哋都係嚟自卑斯省北部嘅部落，各有意思。Here was carved by Charlie James, also of the Kukwakiwak people, and this pole was put in a book, so it was it's probably one of the most copied and the most appropriated sculpture. And When he was a master carver during his time, he was not allowed to carve his totems for his own cultural community needs. Back then, it was illegal for our people to practice our culture, and you can go to jail. Our people went to jail when they potlatched. It was a, a event that was not understood. 
Totems tell the lineage, which is our gene genealogical history. They speak of important events within our society. They highlight our spiritual beliefs and our connection to the spirit world. They mark um, great leaders. I have a totem behind me from the Haida people, and it's a mortuary pole honoring that great leader. So. Not only do those totems represent many different groups of Indigenous people, their meanings and their purposes are also very different. Candice is a member of the Indigenous people. She wants to share her Indigenous culture and other people. My name is Candice Campo, and my ancestral name is Hatsumaitsa. It translates to always be there. Being raised within an Indigenous family, I grew up with all of the traditions of living off the land, gathering medicines, berry picking, harvesting, and I so got accustomed to being on the land that working with children and working with students was an aspiration. We have customers from throughout the world, the United Kingdom, Australia, China, Korea, Japan. Uh, it feels like every year we're meeting people from somewhere else in the world that we haven't met yet. So we have a very culturally diverse international clientele and it's awesome. I love it. I just love meeting people and learning a little bit about their culture because we have more in common than we do have difference. It's just a matter of having that conversation and finding that connection. 除了將圖騰主嘅故事同埋圖案中嘅意義分享俾遊客 ，Candice 都會講解温哥華呢片土地嘅歷史咁同埋原住民與大自然嘅關係。This tree is our most sacred tree. All plant life is sacred, but the red cedar tree we call kapai is the tree of life for our people. And the reason why it is our tree of life is that when this tree came into origin over 5,000 years ago after the Ice Age, it really developed our material culture and even supported our spiritual life. We use this tree for housing. We even used it for clothing. How we used it for clothing is you would make an incision and when the sap is running in the spring, you pull a strip and you could pull it quite high and you peel the outer bark from the inner bark. You wrap up that inner bark because it has really rich oils, you put it away. So when you are weaving your clothing, you're actually using the cedar bark that you harvested the year before because the oil, which is absolutely completely bug resistant and mold resistant. I think sustainability is the key word and that's the sustainability of your resources, the land, as well as the people you work with. But I am very excited about the growth of Indigenous tourism. I really think we have a lot to offer to share, to share the story of this land. 好啦，今集嘅節目時間又夠啦。咁如果觀眾對我哋嘅節目有啲乜嘢意見嘅話，係好歡迎大家以電郵嘅方式同我哋聯絡噶。咁如果觀眾想重温翻今集嘅節目，亦都可以上到去我哋嘅網站點擊節目重温一欄。好啦，下星期同樣時間再同大家見面，晚安。